Many people have asked me, what are you doing? What, what is going on? What is this channel all about? And in today's video, I'm talking about the flow code simplified. Now, a lot of people wonder, is Eric Dorr's model different from the traditional MBTI and the traditional approach to cognitive functions established by Carl Jung? And fear not, actually, I tried my best to stay within the baseline definitions established by Carl Jung and within the base structure of the Myers-Briggs type indicator. I try to work from what we've got instead of trying to change it and to create something wholly different or new. Beyond that, what I've started to do is I've started to connect the study of personality type to the study of flow and positive psychology. I believe that your personality type is and represents your core preferences in life, what you enjoy, like, value doing. When you do things that you like, enjoy and value doing, you experience what I call a flow state. You experience a buildup of energy, excitement and flow and motivation. Now what I found is that uh, everyone is different and has a different flow state and your personal type uh, explains what kind of flow state you have. Introverts experience flow when they engage in introverted activities. Extroverts experience flow when they engage in extroverted activities. Therefore, if you know your personality type, you know what you can do to increase your energy and motivation. Now, you could argue that life is not always supposed to be fun and flow. <laughs> You're supposed to also do things that are important and meaningful. And I agree. I say that you want to first and foremost learn to master principle number one, which is learning to build up energy and flow. And then you want to master principle two, which is learning to harness that energy and harness that flow into doing things that are difficult and challenging and stressful. You want to be a complete person and a complete person is somebody that is not just able to live for gratification and enjoyment, doing careful things without ever addressing responsibilities and challenges and difficulties. You want to learn to channel your energy and flow into your opposite personality traits. So if you find flow from doing things that you enjoy, you find stress from doing things you don't enjoy. But by learning to first flow and then address stress, you learn to be a complete human being that is more balanced. A person that stays in introversion is a pathological person, a person that is stuck in their own inner world and unable to live in the outer world. And such a person couldn't possibly be happy. And so we have to think about what is it that makes us happy as people. The truth is, even if you're an INFP, you still want to have some kind of job, some kind of role, some kind of responsibility or duty from extroverted thinking that gives you a sense of accomplishment and value and being worthwhile. And the same goes for every single person. An ENTJ that lives purely for work and has no artistic pursuits will feel empty and meaningless. Why am I doing anything? Why does it matter? We need to use all functions to be happy and balanced people. And so what you want to think about is cognitive function development. One thing that I find that is missing in the current MBTI and in the current structure of Carl Jung's theories is coherent and consistent and practical advice so that you can develop yourself and to become a happier person. We don't really know what to do and what uh, you could do in order to feel better. We only know how to diagnose, in a sense, what you appear to be at the moment. While existing traditional models tend to say, your personal type is what you do, I tend to say, your personal type is what you enjoy doing. And what I've found is not everyone is doing what they enjoy doing. <laughs> Some people are stuck in a persona. That means that they are stuck in a role. They feel they have to be and act a certain way, even if they don't enjoy being that way. And so I want to help people break that persona so that they can create a more authentic version of themselves. Finally, I talk about the difference between building up energy and releasing energy. I feel that most of us are stuck in a uh, state of always being on the way to something. We're always on the way to something that is going to happen in the future. And so we never really get to feel happy about anything that we do. In some ways, uh, our dominant function allows us to build up flow, build up excitement, build up anticipation, build up energy and hype for something. But if we can never release that energy, we can never feel content. We'll feel like we're constantly on the way to something that we are passionate about, something important, something meaningful that will eventually make us happy. But in itself, the dominant function doesn't make us happy. What I found is we need to find release. And here I kind of connect the dominant function to the sixth function. And in my document, the eight function model, the flow code simplified, I talk about and I give a practical explanation for how you can find that function and find that balance. 
You need to move between moments of working towards things and working towards goals and building up and pushing yourself and motivating yourself, but also moments of relaxation, recreation, enjoyment, contentment, fulfillment, just for the sake of fulfillment. If we're not fulfilled or if we're not able to relax, if we're not able to engage in recreation just for the sake of it and just because it's fun, we're not able to ever enjoy the journey on the way to our dream. Therefore, it's so important that we learn to balance between enjoyment, the journey and the destination, learning to work between our, what you call, the rational and irrational part of our brain. We have a part of our brain that is rational and a part of our brain that is irrational, you could say. What I've found is that some people, they're intuitive or sensory dominant, they're irrational. Some people, they are feeling or thinking dominant, they're rational. I tend to see uh, irrational types as perception types. They and their primary goal is constantly excitement about learning new things. Then, on the other hand, you have the rational types. These types are primarily discerning types. Their goal is to feel good about what they do, to do something important, to live within a confined structure, to reach a certain goal or to abide by a certain set of rules and ethical principles or decisions. And these kind of types are constantly excited about the prospect of fulfilling these goals and living and achieving this kind of ideal. What I've found, however, is we need to sometimes learn to relax and we relax, we regain release by letting go of goals, by letting go of rules, by letting go of expectations, or we gain release by learning to achieve a state of closure, finalizing goals, clarifying our decisions, reaching a concrete opinion or determining what we want to do with all our information. Irrational types, intuitive and sensory dominant, struggle to get released because they're constantly in a state of learning new things but never doing or deciding anything about the things that they learn. And rational types, feeling and thinking dominant types, they're stuck in a state of constantly working towards a goal or trying to fit within a set, start, set of ideals but they're never able to really relax or to go outside of the structure and to see different sides of themselves because they're so fulfilled and so focused on this build up of excitement and anticipation of building up energy to do something. So the third principle of flow and of managing flow is to find a balance between building up energy and releasing energy. I tend to use the example of a pendulum effect for all of this. What I believe is if you want to deal with your opposite personal traits, if you want to develop your inferior functions, what you want to do is you want to first swing to your flow functions. What that means is you go first to your flow functions, they give you energy and motivation and a sense of confidence and competence. And then you take this energy and then you swing to the other side and then you go out into the world, into the challenges, you accept the challenge, you accept the quest, you do the things that are hard with that energy, with that confidence, with the knowledge that you have and you are innately capable and you have talents and unique talents that you can demonstrate and use to make the world a better place. So we work on a pendulum swinging back and forth between this state of going out and learning new things and finding new flow and learning to use that flow to be a useful person in the world. We also move between this state of building up energy to do things and releasing energy, releasing expectations and achieving a sense of closure and contentment, learning to celebrate what you do and enjoy what you do and learning to work towards something, to set goals and to set challenges. All of these things are necessary for happiness and for flow and that's what I teach in the Flow Code. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to check out patreon.com slash for more information on this and I hope to see you in my next video.